Hey, what's up and welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I really wanted to revisit this last tutorial where I created some custom wires for uh, making this project. And there are a lot of great comments and a lot of the reoccurring uh, comments were about a little bit of frustration using the 3D geometry uh, feature for drawing uh, uh, sketches. Uh, some people were kind of getting stuck, things weren't really snapping, and I really wanted to take another pass at this and really uh, deep, dive deep into drawing and working with 3D geometry. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I have a blank document and I'm just going to start off by um, kind of creating uh, this bit of a, a wireframe that um, is going to go in different uh, planes in different directions. So let's start off with drawing out a sketch. So it really it doesn't matter where you're drawing on. Uh, so I'm just going to draw on the, on the plane, sort of my default thing. And now I'm going to kind of show you guys uh, how to draw uh, or using uh, 3D geometry. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to be using the line tool. And I'm just going to draw a single line here. And now the thing is, all right, well, I got my line on this plane. Well, how do I make a line on, on this plane here? And by default, you really can't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the origin. And this gives us a, a, a point of a reference that we can say, hey, I want to draw on this plane here because it's not this floor plane. It's actually this plane here. So the way to do that is I'm going to bring up my sketch model toolbox using the S key and I'm going to type in include and there is filters out the include 3D geometry feature. So once you click on that, Fusion basically wants you to click on either a face of an existing object or in this case a plane. So here's the plane that we want to grab. So I'm going to click on that and Fusion is actually going to do something a little bit weird it actually projected this line here. Uh, it's a bit weird. I'm not sure if um, this is the correct thing, uh, but it is usable in this situation. So I can delete this later, but for whatever reason, uh, my selection tool kind of breaks. So this might happen to you. This might get updated or something, but let's try to create a line now going up on this plane. So what I'll do is I'll grab the line tool again and I want to start from this point and now I want to go on this line. As soon as I move my cursor and uh, orbit around this sketch, you can see that the sketch is going outside of the ground plane. It's actually going on this plane. So that's pretty cool, um, but that's not necessarily where we want to be. So. What you could do is a couple different things. You could kind of click here and then manipulate the point. But we kind of want to go straight up. So what I'm going to try to do is trigger Fusion's uh, dynamic origin. And this is something that I kind of don't know how to exactly get. So it might not be working here on this initial uh, shape here. So I can't get that dynamic origin to show up quite yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that method of just kind of drawing on this edge here. So once I do that, Fusion is, uh, it created a constraint. This is a coincidence constraint, meaning that it sh that point will always be locked to this line. And we can, we can remove that by simply selecting on that icon and then hitting the delete key. And that breaks the relationship. And now I can freely move this around. However, it's not really moving around. And what I'll do is I'll remove this uh, purple line. This is the uh, the line that was generated when we included the sketch for this guy. We don't really need it now, so I'm going to delete that. And I still can't manipulate it around. I'm going to hit stop sketch, see if I can clear out whatever issue is. Now I can make uh, selections again. I'll go back into that sketch and see if I can move this around. I still can't move it around freely. That might be because my selection isn't set properly, but maybe that's not the issue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select that point and then hit the M key, and that's the move command. And now what I can do is I can manipulate this guy moving around like this, and you'll see that it's not actually straight. Well, we can apply a, a horizontal. Actually, you can't. It doesn't like it. 
That's not good. So I guess instead we'll have to do is move it until it is straight. Again, I'm using that move command, M. It doesn't look like it's going straight where I want it to, which is unfortunate. So you can see there, it's not really going straight. Not sure why. Maybe that's as straight as I can. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Um, so <laughs> this isn't working out at all. So now that I <laughs> this is terrible. Um, drawing 3D sketches is, is, is terrible inside here, or at least in this method where I'm trying to do. So again, I'm gonna go here. I can't draw anywhere up, so I can't even use this. I have to create that that strange um, line here. What is that? That's see, that's a not a not a, you can't use the regular uh, projection. You do have to use the three D sketch. You get that weird thing, um, and then I'm gonna create this guy. It's like almost better if uh, if this was created right here because now what I can do is I can create this line and it'll be straight going up. Now I do want uh, a, a fixed dimension, so I'm gonna type in 10 and then hit okay. And that actually worked. That worked pretty well. Not too well, uh, because it was very buggy and finicky, but that's really the, the name of the game here with this, um, this thing here. I'm gonna delete this reference here so I can kind of move this around. So now if I wanted to create um, some more things. I'm going to create this over here. Okay, so you see this. This is where I was talking about the dynamic origin. Look at this origin. It just appeared out of nowhere. It's the red, blue, and green lines. This is letting me know, and there's also a dotted line that's going indefinitely in that direction. That is letting me know that there is, uh, that this line really is going in that orientation. Now it just disappeared. How do I bring it back, right? Well, as I start rotating and orbiting around the sketch point, I guess it just it brings it up whenever it feels like it. <laughs> uh, but in this case, I have the ability to add a dimension. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put 10, hit okay. And that applies it. So now I have uh, a three, point, uh, three lines. I'm gonna apply a, a 10 millimeter um, length here to this line. So now I have a, not fully defined, but I, I can move it around and stuff. Uh, but you can see I have dimensions set to these three things. I'll do another one. Again, um, you, it, at this point I can't draw in 3D space. I need reference, so I'm gonna click on that point. And you'll see that if I orbit around, it's, it's, still, trying to be, it's still trying to go to the floor plane. Uh, and then it isn't until I kind of rotate and, and move the mouse in the right area where this thing gets brought up, this dynamic uh, origin brings up, and that's pretty neat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in 10 again and hit okay, and that applies it. Now one word of warning is that, do you see these, um, these dimensions? Normally you can move them. See how I can move them here on the bottom plane? That works fine, but as soon as I try to move one of these, the, <laughs> The, uh, the dimension gets stuck to the floor and I can't make it go back into the original plane. Um, so that is a prog, that is some sort of bug. I can't undo it. If I hit Command Z, it'll actually delete uh, this line here. So I'm not gonna do that. But just to show you guys that it is very awkward and quirky, that's sort of the behavior at this point in time. It might change, the fusion might get better. Um, but at this point, this is what happens. So now that we have our kind of uh, our, our three-dimensional sketch thing, we can start playing with it. So what I'll do is I'll actually apply a pipe command just because it's really easy. You could do a loft and a profile and all these other things or a sweep, but I'm just gonna use the pipe command. And you can see that the pipe uh, is able to apply pretty well. If I change it to circ circular, it gets a little, um, these edges here are really sharp. So what you can do is you can actually add fillets uh, to this sketch here on the in these sharp corners. So let's bring up our sketch model toolbox type in fillet And then we can actually apply fillets here. I'll put two millimeters It does tend to break uh, one or more of the constraints, but the dimension is still intact So that's pretty good. I'll just right-click and uh, Swipe up to repeat that fillet and we'll do this corner two millimeters here And let's do another one on this last sharp corner here to here two millimeters there that works. Okay I'll hit stop sketch. 
now when I apply the pipe, uh, I can uh, see this nice kind of curved pipe. So this is really interesting way to create these uh, three-dimensional kind of bars. Uh, I'll make a circle thing. And this could be a wire, or this could be uh, obviously a pipe and all that. You can even make it hollow here if you want, which is kind of neat. Uh, so you can make all sorts of kind of wireframe type designs using this technique. It is a little bit awkward, um, definitely uh, awkward. And I wonder if I could still change these. Um, let's say I want this to be 15. It really messes it up, uh, mainly because I think of those fillets were there. If we didn't have those fillets, then maybe it would be okay. So now I got rid of those fillets by just uh, control Zing everything. Let's try to put 20 and it tends to kind of mess it up. It's not straight anymore. And it this one got way moved everywhere. And again, applying, applying uh, these type of horizontal rules uh, doesn't really apply here because it's just, it doesn't know that, that I guess it just doesn't know, yeah. It doesn't know that it's supposed to be straight. Uh, I can try applying, I can't actually apply dimensions to these. Uh, as soon as I hit the D, because I want to do um, a perfect um, degree, it won't let me. So if I want to go here and here and then hit D on my keyboard, I can't do a dimension that will be, um, let's say, like the degree, the angles. It won't let me do that. So you are pretty limited in the flexibility of drawing this way. So uh, it, the, the best thing you can do is just hit the M key on individual points and try to move them around. Now everything is moving with it. Oh boy, that is not good at all. I don't know why that's that's happening. So that's a pretty, pretty bad bummer. I just want to translate it here. It doesn't seem to be working. It's a bit odd, so yeah, I don't really like it that much. Uh, another another method or, or thing you might want to do is to actually draw on top of existing geometry. And that's kind of what we were doing in the wiring tutorial. So what I'll do is I'll make a new sketch on this plane again. And this time I'll just make a box. And what I'll do is I'll extrude the box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line or actually a spline, a curved spline, to, go, to wrap around this box in different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these surfaces to start drawing on. So it's going to be this one here. And I, I projected that surface in by using the, the project. Uh, it has a hotkey of the letter P. So if you hit P on your keyboard, you can do that. So uh, what I'll do next is I'll bring up the model sketch box and then use, again, the include 3D geometry. But this time I'm going to include this face and that face. And if I hide the solid, you can see that now we have indeed some, some sketch geometry that is in 3D space that's going outside of this plane, the initial plane that we started drawing on. So now you can actually use this, uh, these purple edges to create uh, reference points for our design. So I'm gonna go back into that sketch. I'm gonna bring up the spline tool and this is that curvy tool. So I'm gonna start somewhere around here in the middle and I want it to wrap around this side, but unfortunately you kind of, the only way to do that is to kind of draw on one of these edges and you'll notice that the cursor changes and that lets me know that it's going to set a uh, coincident constraint to that. So I'll draw around there and then I'll click on this edge, click on that one and then going back over here. And again, the the only way this works is because I, I'm referencing uh, sketch geometry. You can move it, it's freely manipulatable here. Um, and if you want to uh, cut out this, or if you want to break the link and go outside of this line, you can do that again by just selecting that line, looking for that coincident um, icon, and then just hitting the delete key, and that breaks that relationship. So now I can kind of move this using the move key. I can kind of move this inward and outside of that box if I wanted to. So hopefully that's helpful. And then you can, of course, use the, uh, the handles here to kind of to move them around. Obviously you have to use the move, well not obviously, but it's not obvious that you actually have to use the move command to manipulate just about everything here. Just clicking and dragging doesn't work. You do have to kind of manipulate it uh, using that move command. So now that that's set, we can apply another pipe to this kind of funky curve here. And there's our pipe. I'll make it a little bit bigger if I want. That doesn't seem to be working. Okay. 
that's working. Uh, so that's that's an interesting way to create uh, this geometry. Um, but another thing is that it's kind of interesting that this that it works this way or to build this way because now that I have um, sort of locked geometry, uh, I can come in here or I, rather I can modify that box and make it bigger. Let's say you want to make it 75 by 75. And what will happen is the the box will update and so will the point. Oh, it didn't really update. That's interesting. And normally it does update, but for whatever reason, Fusion didn't like it. So I'm going to hit, oh, maybe because it was too thick of a pipe. See, that's why I don't like using pipe that much. Sometimes it just doesn't work because it, it tends to intersect with itself with tight geometries. But as you saw, I updated the box and it did change with it. So I'll make this one smaller, make it 50, and you'll see how the shape just goes with it because it's kind of locking to it in certain areas, like in these points here. So it's kind of a neat, um, kind of a wee neat way to drive your 3D sketches with reference geometry. But it's kind of weird at the same time because it's not really conventional in my opinion. Um, but that's basically what I wanted to cover. It's a little bit awkward, but that's the best way I found to do this sort of thing. Um, and again, using the line tools really shows how uh, kind of weird this can get. And you can go, I guess you can go back in here and, and, t and tend to modify this, like add more lines to it. Let's see if we can do that. I really want to add another line uh, going in this direction. So I'll hit the L key and then try to go this direction. Does it go down? Oh, I was trying to draw it down. I want to start from here though. Yeah, so again, getting that uh, dynamic, uh, I'm just calling it that. I don't really know what it's called. It, it, it is an axis. Uh, to my to my eyes, it's an origin because that's what the origin is labeled as. I'm gonna type in here 10, hit OK, and now we got that. And then I, I can even go kind of down and back into itself if I wanted to. Delete this reference thing. I don't need it anymore. I can go down, and again, it just showed up for me. I go back down. I don't want to go that far down. So I, instead of modifying that, I kind of have to see that. Uh, see how it only shows up sometimes. Rotate around. It's very difficult, very frustrating. I, I, I understand. Um, there, we're going down. Okay, right there. I want this to be five. We're down. Okay, cool. So now you got this kind of thing that goes across, up, across, back, forward, and then down again. So you can make some kind of neat stuff. Let's see what we can draw here. Let's say I want this to be 10, and then I'll go back in, 10. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Let's see how that works out as a pipe. So I'll make a pipe here and apply this here. And that's pretty neat. That pipe got applied there. Um, so you can make these kind of funky um, designs. I think this would be cool to make like some sort of uh, wall hanger or maybe some furniture. That'd be kind of neat. And of, course, and of course, you can add those fillets there if you want. Um, and you can change the shapes and stuff. But of course, you can use whatever method, I guess. Once you have the geometry, you can kind of create whatever you want. Or you can make like puzzles or something like that. Uh, that's pretty neat. Um, but that's really it. If you guys have any tips, I would really appreciate them on using sketch geometry. The one thing that I'm kind of really curious about is the best way to kind of go about making this type of thing. Um, I showed you two different methods. One was projecting uh, these origin planes onto a sketch as a, as a include 3D geometry. But again, as you saw, it really makes some funky results. It is uh, not really... I don't think it's really the right way to do stuff, but it just feels that way. But maybe it is. I don't know. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're still stuck, uh, just keep playing with it and drop your comments in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.